problem. So, uh, yeah, lightweight daemon, it takes inputs um, and it sends them out. So it's it not doing a lot. Um, it's basically just wanting inputs and will send that to FluentD. But it theoretically could send that also to other uh, systems. So it even has integration with Greylog, uh, with Carbon, with many other things. So it doesn't necessarily need FluentD uh, there. Um, one of the other advantages, it's much easier to set up TLS. So Syslog can do TLS. Uh, but it's mostly, or most people find it a little bit more complicated and cumbersome to set up. Uh, Fluent Bit comes directly with TLS support built in, um, and there is an extra uh, repository where you can actually uh, create the certificates. Um, and if you're using Fluent D, you can even do certificate distribution through Fluent D, which makes it a little bit easier to set up and easier to manage. So now we need something to store all this data in. Um, I use Carbon or Graphite. Um, so it's basically a, another project written in Python, uh, which has a, a Django web framework where you can do API calls against. Uh, Carbon will actually process all these metrics that come in and write them to the Whisper database. Um, the Whisper database is a time series database, but it's basically on fi uh, a file-based system a file-based uh, database, which makes it uh, as performant as your file system is. Um, that's good and bad. That's why Carbon is actually there in the middle. Uh, it does a lot of the caching, uh, so it can actually handle a lot more data while it's not yet written to disk. Um, for, for normal setups, this works quite well. Uh, you could choose other projects. There's InfluxDB. Um, there are a few other ones that are available. Uh, we chose this because this is, well, this was the, the first one that we had, uh, and we had the most experience using this. Then, of course, we need to have nice uh, dashboards um, and have, or ha have the possibility to correlate graphs and predictive uh, analysis with uh, all this data. Um, so we use Grafana. Uh, which is basically a visualization tool, uh, but it also has the possibility to integrate with log management, so you can actually see uh, graphs next to logs um, and aggregate these logs together. Um, it also has metrics overview because it basically hooks up to uh, an external backend, in this case Carbon, um, and will get all the data from Carbon so that it can actually uh, display these things nicely. Uh, it's written in Golang, so it's basically one s single binary which you can run somewhere. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be all on the same host. Uh, you could spread that out if you want high availability. Um, typically, we, we only run one Grafana uh, because it's not that important. Um, but that depends on, on what you want to do. Um, yeah, we, we use Isinga for the monitoring, so we would like to have one a uh, web portal where a, an end user or a customer can actually log in and see whether the, the host, the service, or the process is running. Um, and we use Isinga for monitoring, for the alerting, um, also for the notification. Um, I have another presentation where we actually abuse the notification and try to do some self-healing through that. Um, for most of the end users, actually, the business overview is, is more important. They are more interested to know, is my website working? Is my service still up and running? Uh, they don't want to be able to always dig down. Uh, for other people, um, like developers, they want to know exactly what is happening so they can actually dig down and see the logs of the machine or the application, um, and then better understand what applications are doing and how machines are reacting towards that. Uh, this is a little bit small, but it basically is uh, you have the Fluent bits on um, this side, which talk to multiple Fluent Ds. So the Fluent D is highly available. Typically, you can set up two or three um, uh, nodes in the Fluent bit. So if one of your uh, Fluent D machines goes down or you have any issues, it directly communicates with the other one. Once the other ones come back up, they, they um, are back available. Um, and from FluentD, then it goes into Carbon, um, which has all your metrics and your data, also all your 
uh, logs there. Um, and then Grafana does the visualization, and Isinga is more or less the front end towards the, the customer facing side. Is that clear? Now, if you had to set that all up manually, uh, that's quite a lot of work and something you don't like doing manually. So uh, we use Ansible to, to orchestrate and to manage all the configuration. Um, so it's another tool. Um, this basically runs uh, a bunch of playbooks which are uh, divided into roles which will create the VMs for us, which will configure Fluentd, flu all the hosts with Fluent Bit, um, will configure Grafana, will configure Isinga, so if a machine goes down, we can actually reproduce all the infrastructure uh, automatically again. So how do we actually build the stuff? Um, so for the Fluentd, it's quite basic setup. Uh, it basically runs on a port and it does uh, by default API calls over uh, HTTP. Um, and then you basically give it a place where it can store the data temporarily or permanently. Um, and it uses the, the file system to do its caching before it gives the outputs. Uh, you can even configure that you keep a local copy so you have all the data additionally there also. Um, from an application point of view, you can do automatic forwarding. Um, you can do access control or regex. So that means that in this case, it would be able to send certain data to Elasticsearch if you're using Elasticsearch. Or it can even um, segregate and do uh, mappings um, which will automatically send data to the right system or will automatically highlight certain specific things. If you want to run it as a syslog, you basically just configure it to run in syslog mode, and it will get all the data. Um, and then you can do some expression handling on it and filter out on things where this uh, is more relevant or which you want to get highlighted or pushed faster or slower to your front end. In, in our case, we push everything to carbon, so we basically have a key. Uh, which basically is used by Carbon then to put the data away, um, and it allows uh, Fluentd to, to write all the data to Carbon, and we have a, a nice time series there of all the data itself. Uh, Fluentbit is, is, like I said, a, a very lightweight um, forwarder. Uh, the configuration is also quite simple. It basically tells where it has to send and what input it has and what output it has. Um, in this point, you can then configure it to uh, use Fluentd or any other uh, aggregation tool to send data to. Uh, Carbon, the, 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 uh, the way that Carbon works is you need to predefine the time series. Um, so that's the only disadvantage. In adv uh, when you're setting it up, you need to tell it how, many, how much data it will retain over its lifespan, um, which means that you need to, in advance, tell it how long and what intervals it will have, um, and then it creates an internal database structure of that. Um, for uh, the... Graphite part, which is the API which Grafana and other tools can call, um, it basically sets up a, a little API tool where you can get a lot of functions out. Um, Isinga, uh, Grafana typically have all the API calls in it. You just need to point it to the right direction. Um, and then Carbon will do all the stuff with Graphite at the back end. So how do we do the automation? Um, it's basically running a small script. We, we create a new VM. Uh, we configure the Fluentd and the Carbon on it. Um, and then we use the bits, uh, so the Fluent bits, to install the uh, client side. Um, and that's basically now how much work we have on it. So setting up a new infrastructure for customers is, is running typically three or four playbooks. And everything is done automatically.
So we've been able to uh, build an integrated open source tool that does monitoring and logging. Um, and it's able to send data. Um, the front end visualization isn't fully integrated yet. Um, so I can't show you that. Uh, but we, we have side by side things which are working. Um, the next step is to actually get all the logs and be able to correlate when events happen and to select them so that we can actually see what is happening and when things go wrong. And I think I'm done quite quickly. <laughs> no idea what time it is. Um, yeah, questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, some uh, years ago I tried to replace uh, FluentD with FluentBit on some uh, machine with very high traffic. Uh, front-end machine like a uh, thousand, thousand of uh, requests for seconds. And I uh, encountered uh, performance problems. Uh, FluentD was working quite good, uh, but FluentBit uh, not. With high usage of CPU and uh, losing uh, log lines. You have encountered uh, things like this? Or? Yeah, so the first versions of FluentBit were written in Go. Um, and uh, at some point they rewrote everything in C. Um, I presume it has to do with that. Um, I didn't follow up what the problems were exactly, but the, the new implementation in C has much less problems. Um, typically, they say they can handle about, uh, if I remember well, about 20,000 requests per second uh, should be enough with a, with a small little daemon. Um, if you want to do more than that, then typically what they advise is to do a little bit more optimization in the bit configuration and spread it out over multiple uh, configuration, means multiple threads um, in that way. Okay, thank you. I will try again. <laughs> Hi, thanks for a great talk. Um, I have a, a question regarding the FluentD uh, in the middle, uh, which is doing the transformation. Is it better to have uh, a, the file cache if uh, there is too much load or the buffer cache where uh, you need, uh, store all the logs which cannot be written to the graphite? Maybe it's out of uh, something. So that depends on how much memory you allocate to your FluentD machines. Um, if you have a lot of memory, you can do buffering because it basically will just use your memory for that. Um, if you don't have that much memory, then putting it on disk is the only option. The disk is, of course, much more expensive. Um, uh, if you have SSDs, again, that makes it a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, that's, it, it also depends how much data you're pushing through there. If it is very limited, then it's fine by doing it in memory. If it's larger, then you will end up having to put it on disk. OK, thanks. Any more questions? Don't be afraid. One more thing, like I said, we, I run a few conferences. Um, this is Config Management Camp uh, from the 3rd to the 5th of February after FOSDEM. The CFP is still open. You can also register. F um, it's a free event, so registration is just for crowd control and, and because the venue has a limited space. Um, so yeah. Okay, thank you very much.